so we've got Ahmed for another lower limb viva session. Are you ready? Yes. So you've got this 35 year old male presented to your A&E department with the injury shown in the radiograph. Uh, uh, he uh, has been uh, treated with the ATLS guidelines and this is an isolated injury. How would you manage? So this is an AP radiograph of the left ankle showing um, a fresh dislocation of the left ankle, at least the bimalular, but there might be a, a trimalular component, which I can't see. Um, I will go immediately to examine the patient's, patient's limb. Um, um, I will examine the neurovascular states and document that clearly in his notes. Um, I would also uh, look for any skin compromise, any skin cuts, blister fra or fractured um, blisters. Uh, then my uh, pressing uh, concern would be to try to reduce this ankle as early as possible, depending on the uh, local protocol of the hospital, if they have the capacity to sedate in the e be this would be ideal and would be the quickest. Um, I'll obtain a verbal consent from the patient and um, try to reduce his ankle uh, under proper um, sedation by traction counter traction. Um, I'll then put him in a back stab with the stirrup uh, support. I'll obtain uh, post reduction radiographs and an AP and lateral uh, view and we'll document the neurovascular states of the limb uh, after um, the reduction. Okay, so you have reduced it. Uh, he is neurovascularly uh, intact before and after. Uh, the skin is swollen around the ankle, but there is no uh, cuts uh, or uh, blisters in the skin. Yeah, I want to um, to have um, further images in order to be able to uh, to assess uh, the so configuration of the fracture. You have the uh, in front of you, yeah. Uh, ideally, um, according to the post guidelines, I'd be aiming for definite fixation either on the same day, uh, if it is within the hours or the next um, day uh, maximum. Um, why, why would you want to rush it and, and, and go to surgery the, that day or the next day? Why wouldn't you wait until the swelling settles down? So it's been proven that the first 48 hours is a safe uh, window to operate on and is associated with the best outcomes. And even if the ankle is swollen, it's likely to be only hematoma and, um, and the skin will close perfectly even if we proceed. However, if for any reason we had to wait, it'll be uh, at least seven to 10 days until the swelling down and until the skin wrinkles are back before it's safe um, to operate. Yes, okay, I agree. So uh, you've taken him to the ward, he, he, you've put some ice packs, you've elevated it, and um, he's, he's comfortable for now, and you are discussing with your colleagues uh, how you're going to fix this. Uh, what are your thoughts? So looking at the, um, at the CT scan, I can see that it's a um, uh, trimalleolar um, uh, fracture, um, a Weber C with a high uh, fibula. Uh, I would be aiming to restore the ankle gongerty and the stability of the ankle uh, mortis. Uh, I'll be aiming to fix the three uh, different components of the, um, of the fracture, as well as stabilizing his uh, sense moses. Um, so I'll consent him for uh, open reduction internal fixation of um, the ankle, or obviously explaining all the risks and the benefits. Yeah. Talk me, talk me through the sort of main uh, uh, main strategies during the surgery itself. What are you gonna What are you gonna start? How are you gonna position him? All of that. Uh, so, uh, assuming I'm in the operating theatre and the patient has been anesthetized, um, I would aim to put him in a prone position. I know that some surgeons would do a lateral position, but my preference would be a prone position. Uh, I would use the postural approach to uh, access his posterior malleolus and the, um, the fibula. Uh, I would then proceed to fix the, the median malleolus. Um, uh, with that, how, so tell me about the posterior malleolus. Any concerns about the reduction and how are you going to fix that posterior malleolus? I can see on the sagittal view uh, a small interposed fragment between the big chunk and the main shaft of the tibia, which is often the um, case. Um, most of the time, this fragment is very uh, hard to fix and stay and doesn't stay in place and ends up a loose uh, body in the joint. Uh, so most of the time, it's just a contra fragment, and we excise it and reduce the main fragment to the shaft, uh, the, the, the main posterior manual fragment to the shaft of the um, of the tibia. Okay. Um, Go on. Yeah, for the lateral. Uh, so the postural approach would involve a skin incision halfway between the um, border of the fibula, the posterior border of the fibula, and the tender Achilles. 
I will um, go through the skin and the uh, fascia and then identify the perineal um, tendons. It has two windows, uh, the first window to access the posterior malleolus, and this is between the perineal tendons and the FHL. I'll have to ex to, uh, to excise uh, yep. to what's exactly. okay. okay, so what do you think? Um, I think it, it went reasonably uh, well. I would um, I would ideally want some more time to elaborate on the um, approach, uh, on the surgical uh, approach, and some uh, maybe some technicalities in fixing such um, complex um, um, ankle fractures. Uh, but I think I followed the protocol which I use in everyday uh, life when you see such fractures in the A and E, um, and I. I knew my priorities uh, uh, from the start, I guess, to some point. Um, so it went, it went reasonably well. Yeah, I think you did well. I mean, this, is, this should be a sort of a straightforward uh, viva, and uh, you should be familiar with it, which is exactly what you did. You just described what you usually would do. And, and then when it came to the technicalities, you had a clear plan and uh, you address the, you know, the, the, the postulatory approach. And it's, it's fine that there's no time for the full approach. And I've been in that situation in the exam where, you know, we've, we've discussed everything there could be discussed about the injury. So we started talking about the approach and then when I'm, you know, midway through the approach, then the bell rings and you move on. And I think that's a good end. And it's, if you've reached that point, it probably means you're, you're scoring a seven or an eight. So yes, well done, thank you. Uh, going to the uh, uh, both guidelines for the ankle fractures, uh, I think it's been updated 2018. So just be aware of the update. Uh, we've basically covered uh, uh, the guidelines through this Viva. Um, maybe the bit that you just need to be aware of is the timing of intervention, preferably uh, on the day or the day after. And if not, then you would have to wait until the swelling uh, settles down. And it also um, talks about the weight-bearing status, and it recommends weight-bearing as tolerated uh, unless there is a frank um, uh, or there is a serious concern about weight-bearing. Uh, okay, thank you. Would you like to add anything, Ahmed? Um, um, I don't have the, uh, the study here in the presentation, unfortunately, but there is uh, uh, two multicentral trials which, uh, which you might need to familiarize yourself with before the exam. They're v relatively very recent trials. Uh, one is the ERS trial, which randomizes the patient between a um, functional brace like a boot and a cast when it comes to um, immobilizing ankle fractures, whether the operatively fixed or the conservatively treated one. And it found no difference between, uh, between both of them. So it's, um, it's, it's good to know uh, such trials, especially it's a big multicenter one. The other one is just the starting, it's called the WAX trial. And um, because we know the controversy uh, with the ankle fractures and most of the surgeons would not be weight bearing their patients, in spite of the fact that it states clearly on the BOSS guidelines that this should be the default. So the WAX trial is again a multi-center trial um, initiated mainly in, in Oxford, uh, which compares the weight bearing versus the non-weight bearing in the operatively fixed um, ankle fractures, but it's just still starting. So oh. just to keep an update with the, um, with the multi-centric trials, it's always, um, it's always a positive thing in the exam and it'll definitely get you uh, one mark up of your, uh, your standard score.